So if you're looking to pick up a copy of the Usborne Complete Shakespeare, you probably want to hear what the English phrasing sounds like. It is not in Elizabethan English or King Jamesian English, Shakespeare's version of the language. It is modern, and they try to work in some of the quotes. So I'm going to show an example of a reading by reading a little bit between Benedict and Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing. Here is the two-page um, synopsis with the characters for Much Ado About Nothing. It's about one pair of lovers who won't be parted, another pair who won't be united. But in this game of love and hate is anything as it seems. And the couple that I love so much is Beatrice and, and Benedict. Beatrice is a feisty, sharp-witted young lady who insists she is not looking for love. But then why does she engage Benedict in a constant battle of wits? And Benedict is a spirited charmer who declares he will never be married, yet seems to be drawn to sharp-tongued Beatrice. Let's see an exchange between the two. Leonato, the governor of Messina, was strolling in his garden with his daughter Hero and his niece Beatrice when the messenger arrived with a letter. Leonato read it. The war is over, he reported happily. The prince, Don Pedro, and his troops are returning. They'll be here any minute. We'll have a party this evening to celebrate. He turned to the messenger. It says here that Don Pedro has awarded a medal to one of his soldiers. Yes, sir, to young Count Claudio. He looks like a lamb, but he fought like a lion, the messenger replied. Hero and Beatrice were listening intently. Is Sir Cut and Thrust returning too? Beatrice asked innocently. The messenger was confused. I don't know the name. She means Benedict of Padua, Hero explained, laughing. The messenger smiled. Oh, then yes, he's as well as ever. There's a kind of merry war between him and my niece, Leonardo said. There's a skirmish of wits whenever they meet. Last time, four and a half of his wits went limping off, so he's only a half-wit now, Beatrice quipped. Tell me, was his new best friend. He changes them as often as his hat. He is often with Count Claudio, replied the messenger. God help Claudio then, Beatrice laughed. Benedict's like a disease. If Claudio's caught a Benedict, it'll cost him a pretty penny before he's cured. As they were speaking, a group of men strode into the garden. It was the prince, Don Pedro himself, along with his two best soldiers, Claudio and Benedict. Leonardo strolled over to welcome his friend. Welcome back. Come, tell me all your news, Leonardo urged. The two friends walked away chatting, leaving the ladies and soldiers together. Benedict bowed to Hero. Lady Hero, you take after your father. Well, except for his beard, of course, he joked. Beatrice cast him a withering glance. Are you still here? My dear Lady Disdain, said Benedict with a grin, still alive and kicking yourself, I see. Indeed, how could Disdain possibly die when she has such sweet food as you provide, Beatrice replied with an acid smile. Benedict grimaced. It's strange. Most ladies love me, apart from you. Not that I love any back, mind you. That will make women very happy, Beatrice retorted. Oddly enough, I agree with you for once. I'd rather hear my do dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Let's leave it there, said Benedict, who had seen the prince and Leonardo coming back. Although I wish my horse had the speed of your tongue. Don Pedro, Pedro and Leonardo each offered an arm to the young ladies, and the four began to walk towards the house. Claudio and Benedict stood gazing after them. Did you see Leonardo's daughter? Claudio whispered. She's the sweetest lady I ever laid eyes on. Really? I didn't notice, Benedict said carelessly. Her cousin outstrips her in beauty as May outstrips December. Shame she's so furious all the time. Then he looked at his friend's dreamy face and realized what was going on. Hold on, he cried. You aren't going to abandon me for a woman, are you? I know I swore not to, but hero, Claudio mooned. And here's a quote at the end. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Each quote says the speaker of the quote, Beatrice, and where it's found. Act one, scene one. So this is the English phrasing inside of the complete Shakespeare stories from all the plays.